New this morning, a Maryland man accused of trying to help ISIS here in the U.S. will be staying behind bars. A judge ordered Nilash Muhammad Das to be held until his trial. He's 24 years old. He's been living in Hyattsville. He's now accused of plotting to kill a U.S. service member in Prince George's County. <clears throat> Police say he shared his plan with an FBI informant. Daz's attorney says he plans to plead not guilty, but if he's convicted, he could face up to 20 years in federal prison. Activist and political commentator Hossein Al Bukhaiti joins us now via satellite from the Yemeni capital, Sana. Mr. Al Bukhaiti, welcome to the program. The uh, issue of humanitarian aid to Yemen. Uh, has been much neglected to, with regards to the impoverished Arab country. Iran is uh, among one of the countries that has uh, called for uh, the uh, facilitating uh, and the dispatching of its uh, aid consignment uh, to Yemen. Why is the United Nations uh, lingering and lagging behind when it comes to the uh, delivery of aid to Yemen? Uh, because the United uh, Nations is clearly on the side of the Saudi uh, and the United Nations uh, is part of this uh, blockade uh, on Yemen. Uh, and we know that Yemen have, uh, 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 there is a blockade in Yemen for almost 19 months. Uh, uh, we have uh, lack of uh, food, uh, lack of medicine, and as well, uh, people can't even go outside Yemen to get uh, medical uh, treatment. And uh, this uh, latest request uh, by Iran was not the first. Uh, we remember that the Iranians have sent uh, a humanitarian uh, ship to Yemen uh, but it, and, and requested entry to Yemen, but it was refused by the United uh, Nation and it was threatened by the Saudi that they will uh, sink it. Actually, it was a Saudi warning, uh, but uh, it was an American ship uh, uh, that uh, enforced this uh, blockade. And the Iranians have asked as well for that ship to be searched either in Djibouti and then to be let go under the UN supervision uh, to deliver its uh, humanitarian aid. It was as well refused to do that and they, they were asked to uh, offload their uh, uh, goods in Djibouti and then th that good was going to go into another ship and it could have cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yemen is in need of these thousands of dollars but at, at the end we haven't seen anything in Yemen and we heard that the, some of these goods were sold in Djibouti and many many of other humanitarian aid are written off in Djibouti uh, port. Uh, so th that uh, as well with the request of the Iranian uh, ambassador at the UN uh, when he submitted this letter from the Iranian uh, foreign uh, minister, uh, it has as well requested that this plane will be bringing people from Sana'a to Iran for medical and urgent uh, help in Iranian hospital. Just the latest uh, 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 data or latest report on the attack on the funeral hall uh, till now uh, six, 635 uh, were injured. Uh, over 100 of them are badly and are in critical condition. Those are the people that the Iranian offered to take them uh, back or some of them into Iranian hospital. Uh, 90 uh, were killed. Those were I identified. And there is 55 uh, bodies who are totally burned. Nobody knows who those are. And there are as well on the top of that hundreds of body parts from hands, arm, jaw, jaws, heads, tooth, eyes, everything. I mean, I think there could still be about uh, uh, 40 people that people doesn't know where they are the whole or they evaporated by this uh, Saudi airstrike. And on the top of that now we see there is no plane coming into Yemen. There is no urgent uh, help coming neither from the UN, neither from uh, any other country. And they as well block aid coming from Iran or Russia or other country uh, that, which are against uh, this uh, aggression in Yemen. Well, so many observers uh, of this situation, Mr. al to believe that the United Nations has not just failed the people of Yemen uh, on the humanitarian front, but they've uh, failed the people of Yemen uh, across the board. I mean, it's clearly, uh, I've just uh, read in the news that uh, uh, the, uh, 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 we call it in the, the, the Human Rights uh, high, high Council or has, has uh, uh, criticized uh, the Geneva Human Rights uh, Panel and they all part of the UN is like somebody criticizing uh, himself uh, about what's going on in Yemen. Uh, the United Nations uh, has, uh, hasn't done anything. 
the, uh, to, to, uh, to do an, any investigation in Yemen? Why do they need a permission from the human rights panel, which is controlled by the United States, Britain, and the Saudi, who are part, who are heading this human rights panel, uh, because they were elected at the beginning of the war in Yemen? Why, why do they should just send investigator into Yemen, despite the human rights panel, if they refuse or not, because Britain has blocked two investigations, and then uh, the Arab League has blocked the third investigation, and now they are saying we have uh, this attack on the funeral uh, ceremony must be investigated uh, by the UN. I mean, if they can investigate this, why wouldn't they investigate the whole situation in Yemen? Over 10,000 people has been killed. And 10, those by direct airstrike, and 10,000 uh, children, according to UNICEF, have died from lack of nutrition, lack of medicine, lack of health care. And over 30,000 were killed. Where was the UN? Where was the United States? We only see more sales of, of, of uh, US and uh, Britain arms to the Saudi. They block an investigation. They keep supporting Yemen. They force blockade on Yemen. And still, they complain when the Yemeni attack the Saudi border. They just want Yemeni to sit and die either in their homes, in their market, in their hospitals, on, in the road, in their funeral ceremony. What else can they, what else do they want from Yemenis? And after the attack on Sana'a, people in Yemen are calling, and I've seen many, many people on social media, on the street, everywhere. They are calling for the Yemeni army and Ansarullah the Houthi to target deep inside Saudi Arabia. They even calling to attack Dubai with the Scud missile to attack Abu Dhabi because they know one missile to, to United Arab Emirates or two missiles will make its economy who depend 100% on tourist collapse. And this is what the Yemeni now asking. And I'm just saying I don't want anybody to blame Yemeni when we're going to do anything like that, when we're going to attack the heart of these countries who are in support of this aggression Indeed. in Yemen or who, those countries who force the Yemeni people to die. Thank you very much, Sir Actress and political commentator. Uh, from Sana Hussein al -Bukhari. But we begin with breaking news out of the capital city where one person is in the hospital after being stabbed inside of a McDonald's on Broad Street. And the incident happened around 8 o'clock tonight. Eyewitness News reporter Kelly Sullivan joins us now live with the breaking details from the Providence Mobile Newsroom. The scene cleared just a short time ago, but Providence police are still investigating after a man was stabbed inside a McDonald's this evening. Just after 8 o'clock Tuesday evening, Providence police responded to this McDonald's on Broad Street. Police say a female stabbed a male inside. We were there as investigators collected evidence inside the fast food restaurant. I spoke with an employee off camera who tells me he was bagging food at the time when he first heard an argument and then a man was stabbed. The employee says the man was taken away in an ambulance. Now we've learned from a manager that none of the employees were hurt. The inside of the restaurant is closed while the investigation continues, although the drive through remains open. And right now it's unclear of that victim's condition and Providence police didn't say whether or not they arrested a suspect. Investigators do tell us there's a camera inside that McDonald's. Right now they're going through that surveillance video. Of course, count on us to bring you any updates on this story as soon as we get them. Reporting live at the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Kelly Sullivan, Eyewitness News. Marcus Papadopoulos, the publisher and editor of Politics First, joining us from joining us to tell us more about this development. So you have a warning, uh, I would think is pretty serious, from uh, Iraq's prime minister that this risks a regional war. Do you think that that uh, is a possibility here? I think it's a possibility. However, I don't think it's very probable. Nonetheless, we need to establish some facts for people uh, watching this interview. First of all, Turkey has invaded and is illegally occupying a part of Iraqi territory. That is a blatant, a flagrant violation of international law. The sanctity of internationally recognized borders is a linchpin of the United Nations and of international law. All UN members in the, in all, all United Nations members have recognized uh, the sanctity of Iraq's uh, internationally recognized borders. And here we have Turkey having sent over its army into Iraq to fight allegedly ISIS, when the irony, of course, is that Turkey has long been supporting ISIS. But nonetheless, uh, the reason is that uh, Turkey is there to fight ISIS. Now, the Iraqi government has every right under international law to order the Iraqi government to attack, 
the Turkish military force occupying that part of northern Iraq and to expel it. So let me just clarify, let me just say this again. Turkey has invaded and is illegally occupying a part of Iraqi territory. Now, why don't most people in the world talk about this? Why is it not brought up in Britain, in France, in Germany? Well, simply because Western media is still, regrettably, the dominant media force in the world today. And the West, in terms of Western governments, principally America and Britain, has a very, very close historical relationship with Turkey. The Americans and the British gain from that relationship with Turkey, and likewise, Turkey gains from its close relationship with America and Britain. And one of the ways that Turkey gains is that it is able to act uh, with impunity in that region. So it sends its forces into northern uh, Iraq. The Americans and the British, the American and British governments don't say anything about it. So American and British media won't say anything about it because American and British media is not independent. It's very much part of the uh, American and British elites. And then we have Turkey sending its forces into northern Syria, once again, without even a word coming out of Washington or London. And then we can cite other examples, for example, Turkey's uh, invasion of Cyprus and its partition of Cyprus in 1974. So regrettably, what we see in, uh, in northern Iraq is nothing new. The audacity for Turkey's Erdogan uh, to simply ignore what the Iraqi government is saying, is demanding, really just, uh, really mm. just beggars belief. Because once again, as I've said, here we have an army of occupation in Iraq, and the Iraqi government has every right to expel that army of occupation. Will the BBC, will Sky News, will CNN uh, report on what I have just said? Will they uh, cover Turkey's uh, presence, occupation in Iraq, from the perspective I'm coming at? Not at all, because Turkey is a staunch friend and ally of America and Britain, and Turkey has a blank check from the Americans and the British to do what it wants in the region. And unfortunately, uh -huh. that is not going to change. Thank you, Marcus Papadopoulos, <laughs> publisher and editor of Politics First. Well, Ramallah. joining us now is head of the Stop the Wild campaign, Mr. Jamal Joman, was with us from Ramallah. Sir, welcome to the program. Uh, these uh, draconian measures Thank implemented you. by the Israeli regime have been criticized uh, by, uh, by the Palestinians. They say that uh, the uh, measures are not intended for security, but uh, are in fact being implemented to uh, further pressure uh, the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Tell us more, please. I think this is the only state in the world that in their face they put curfew and they put blockades on other people. Like, I mean, they are intent to do since very long in their feast and their celebration to put more oppression to the Palestinians, use it in a way in a way to humiliate the Palestinians and to to freeze the life of the Palestinians. We have been forced in their in their in their feast to stay at home, to stop our businesses, to stop moving our cars in the streets, which is this is really and a fascist. I can't imagine that this thing had happened in any other world, a part of the world where, where some people in their feasts that they support to celebrate, they are celebrating it by, by blockading and besieging other people and freeze their life and humiliate them and like they are, like punish them for, their, for, for the feast that they are celebrating. We are targeted all the time by the Israeli occupation to be like intended and to be dealt with as a suspicious and, and uh, as a target for, the, for, uh, for, their, for their policies, for their fascist policies, even their face, they are using it against us as the tools of the occupation. Well, the actions of the Israelis, as you mentioned, um, are shocking and perplexing in the way that they uh, pressure and humiliate uh, an entire people, uh, the Palestinians in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip, of course, uh, the international community has uh, remained silent with regards uh, to these rights violations that take place on a day-to-day -day basis. Why is that? You know, nobody, nobody in the world talk about this as a violation for human rights, for other people. You celebrate your, your, uh, your religion uh, and your feasts. Why I should pay a price in my life for that? So this is, this is one of the basic 
violations for our rights, our right to movement, our right to continue our life normally, to go to our businesses, to go to to continue the, the, day, the, day, the daily life that we the, that we having. This is a serious violation of the human rights that added to all the violations and the crimes that Israel is committing against the Palestinian people. The problem of the international community, when it comes to Israel, that there is no human, what so-called human rights should be implemented. There is no people who's violating, who their human rights has been violated, as if we are not existed, as if Israel is, is, is can be above the international law and to be treated like uh, in a unique way that they can do that. They can do that, and the Palestinian is not a human. In this case, if we want to put it in this case, I think the international community who didn't, who didn't consider this as like, as this is an abuse for a people, for the human rights, they are racist as, as much as the Israelis are racist to the Palestinian people. Well, the Israeli conduct has uh, been carrying on uh, and has continued for over seven decades now in, in occupied Palestine. How can the status quo change? I think that the, the world has the world conscious has to wake up and has to change, and they has to understand that the, as far as the Palestinians continue under occupation and this violations in their rights is continuously happening, there is nothing called human rights in the world is became complete. There is no peace in the world. There is no peace in the Middle East. The colonial power must understand that Israel can't continue. They are cornerstone for the for the colony, the colonizers in the Middle East. They can't continue do what they are doing to the Palestinian people. Without the stability of the Palestinian situation, the Palestinians getting their rights, no stability is going to be in the in the region. And this is has this has became a fact. This is this has impact the situation all around uh, around around us and as well as as uh, in the world. That's why that's where we're demanding as a Palestinians that our catastrophe should be ended. We have a certain point to live like any human beings in the world, like any people around the world. They have their own freedom. They have their own state. They have in life that they have decided on how to live their life. Not when there's somebody had a feast, they have to put us in our house and look us in our house because they want to enjoy their feasts. Head of the Stop the Wall campaign, Jamal Jamal, joining us from Ramallah. Thank you, Mr. Jamal.